Good day. Money or talent? Which is the most important? Now, in all reality, to make a really good movie, you have to have a bit of both. You have to have money to hire actors and to pay for special effects. And you need talent to use both effectively. Now, most video game to movie adaptations have very little money and even less talent. In just about every conceivable way, Ultramarines was horrible. On a technical side of things, it looked like it was rendered out on a PS2, the animation was jerky, and the faces all looked the same, like they reused the same bloody bland space marine skin over and over again. Really, for a professional production, this thing looks pretty damn amateurish. The only problem is, amateur productions are actually superior to ultramarines. You see, a few weeks back, I discovered Doom Arenas, a fan film that is not only superior to ultramarines, even though it has nothing to do with Warhammer 40k, but also that crappy, crappy Doom movie. I still don't get why professionally made video game to movie adaptations are so bad. Just look at Dumb Nautis. That was a fan made film that was better written and better acted than just about any of those idiotic Resident Evil films. Do fan made productions have more talent behind them or do the fans just care about the story overall? The Doom film is so poorly written, acted, and directed that one must ask as to whether no one cared or no one had any talent. Surely someone working on this film had to know that what they were making was crap. Surely someone must have read the script and saw that the film had no plot other than just walking around with some poorly done action scenes put in. In any event, it doesn't really matter. Poorly made video game movies will continue to be made and they will continue to lose money. While fan-made films that are vastly superior will continue to be unappreciated. Because let's face it, just about every fan-made movie is looked down upon as being somewhat inferior to even those poorly made of professional productions. And one such unappreciated fan-made work is what we're going to be taking a look at today, and that film is... Doom Arenas. The film opens, amazingly enough, with Doom Guy watching the Predator. That's how you know this film is going to be awesome. You have the Doom Guy, one of the most awesome FPS characters of all time, watching one of the greatest action movies of all time. This is some sort of manliness singularity going on here. Now in the scene, you get a bit of banter between Doom Guy and the rest of his squad. They don't get really any development at all, as the only memorable guy is, well, this guy with a knife. Now this scene works well to establish Doom Guy's personality. Wait personality in a video game movie? Whatever next. It's like there was an actual writer. Now in any event, the squad and the rest of the base's personnel gets killed. And it's up to Doom Guy to take on the forces of hell. And good god, we are four minutes in and we actually get a fight between the Doom Guy and an imp. It's a new record! <laughs> Any action movie that is based on an action video game actually gets to the action in the first 10 minutes! This first fight isn't really all that epic, but then again it is Doom Guy killing just one imp. But already we can see that the animation and the fluidity of the fights are actually superior to the ones seen in Ultramarines. Now after the fight, we see Doom Guy enter an area straight out of the very first Doom game, and it actually looks really good in film form. He finds a dying marine, and the animators do an amazing job showing emotion here. Sure, Doom Guy doesn't cry, but just look at his face. Look at how the loss of this guy is affecting him. And then right after, he picks up the fallen marine's chain gun and gets to kill him. The fights in this film are really quite well paced. We don't just see Doom Guy killing enemy after enemy after enemy. Rather, we get to see a bit of action and then a bit of exposition. By far the best fight in the early bit of the movie is Doom Guy's fight against the Kako Demons. Just look at how well animated it is. <laughs> was, in a word, absolutely bloody amazing. Now compare this fight to one in Ultramarines, 
a film that is supposed to be action-packed and professionally produced. In Ultramarines, the mighty warriors of Ultimar generally just shoot in all directions at vaguely defined enemies. Melee combat is also very jerky and not fluid in the slightest. In arenas, it is fluid. You can clearly see everything that is going on, and the moves actually feel like they have some weight behind them. Now, a short time later, this part of the film actually ends when we see Doom Guy go and fight the forces of hell. This is a very good decision, mainly because we did not need to see Doom Guy fight the forces of hell. Mainly because it would have been very boring. All you would have had is one character who would literally have no one to talk to just going through one long unending fight scene. Doom Guy does get rescued by the UAC and in a move that is not often seen, the director actually shows that Doom Guy is suffering from PTSD after fighting the hordes of hell. Now when he was rescued, the UAC forces found the Soul Cube and now of course want to experiment on him. This doesn't end well because, well, it's Doom Guy. The man who single-handedly killed, well, hell. Really, trying to kill and experiment on a man who kills cyber demons as a warm-up has got to be... It was the worst idea in the long, sad history of bad ideas. Doom Guy is able to kill quite a few sec troopers, but he is eventually surrounded. When this happens, his eyes glow red, and it's implied that the Soul Cube's souls have somehow entered Doom Guy and enhanced his combat abilities. Now, before he can be killed, a beam of light comes down and whisks him away. It is now that we find out that this movie is actually based upon Quake 3 Arena. And it works. And it works very bloody well. And it's amazing that it works because Quake 3 Arena had absolutely no story whatsoever. Essentially, Quake 3 Arena was just that. A deathmatch game with the only story coming from the instruction manual. And sure, while it was just instruction manual text, it was at the very least somewhat entertaining. Essentially, in Quake 3 Arena, the story was based around an alien species that captured the greatest warriors of all time, and then they forced them to fight each other. Now, the game featured just about every protagonist or enemy type from id software's first-person shooters. You had Doom Guy, Ranger, who was the soldier from Quake, Bitterman, the Marine from Quake 2, and many others. Doom Arenas is basically able to take a video game and turn it into a movie. I know this is a very far out concept, but they are actually able to do it. The film has health power-ups and armor power-ups, and since it's an alien arena, the power-ups actually make sense. The choice to make the film about Doom Guy being in the Quake Arena was also a good one because now we have a legitimate plot of him trying to survive and eventually escape. This also allows him to meet other characters and actually talk to them. I won't spoil anything past this point, but I will say the fights get more epic and the story gets even more elaborate and complex. So now let's take a look at some of the fundamental aspects of the film, starting with the animation. The animation is amazing. Sure, this is the the id tech 4 engine we're talking about but it actually lends itself well to an animated movie everything is just so fluid and well detailed the fights are never choppy or jerky and the slow motion actually works furthermore we see things from multiple angles as well some places in the film actually have rougher animation than others and sometimes it actually dips down to robot chicken quality I swear your expression better be one of odd epiphany at how badly you just f***ed up right now. But most of the time, it is solid, and it is vastly superior to anything seen in Ultramarines. Just look at these two melee fights. The pacing is excellent, the fight scenes never go on too long, and the exposition bits never get too drawn out and boring. And there is never any deep hurting like in Ultramarines. There's also thankfully never just scenes of bloody walking. Now since this movie is actually pretty short, there isn't that much character development, but what little there is is just so bloody good. 
Now, the voice acting and sound effects are a mixed bag. It's not bad, but the voice acting could have been way better. Really, for what they had to work with, the director and the production team actually did a pretty good job with what voice actors they had access to. And at least, the voice acting in this movie is somewhat superior to the voice acting seen in Oblivion, sans Uriel and Morton Septum, respectively. Now, the music is vastly better than the voice acting. It is just excellent. You have tracks from just about every Doom game and Quake game, along with a few original tracks, along with an awesome song from the German band Rammstein. Now, as an id software fan, this movie is something I've been waiting for for a very long time. But for the non-fan, it may be somewhat hard to follow. While I would certainly not consider myself a non-fan of the Doom and Quake series, you could definitely say I'm not this movie's target audience, considering I've only played a bit of Doom and barely any of the Quake games. So if you're not making a very basic reference to either series, then I'm inclined not to get your joke. Because of this, there were admittedly many moments in the movie that made me go, huh? Such as the many characters featured in the film. Sure, I knew who Doom Guy was, what self-respecting gamer doesn't, but other characters, such as Ranger and Minx, I had no clue about, nor did the movie offer much explanation. It sort of assumes if you're interested enough to watch this movie, you know the universe is involved. Understandable, of course, especially since they did try to offer some very basic backstory for some people. They even offered a freaking flashback for one dude. But nonetheless, it was still occasionally frustrating. Regardless, it never sends you into enough of a mindless ocean of confusion that you can't follow what's going on. The movie's story is basic enough that it's still enjoyable even to casual fans such as myself who don't know all the lore of the series, but just want some epic action. The kind of epic action we never saw in the official Doom movie. And so that is Doom Arenas, a film that is quite possibly the greatest video game movie of all time! And a pretty good action movie in its own right. Now this movie basically proves that all those horrid video game movies that have poor action, poor pacing, poor acting, and poor everything else are bad, not because of lack of money, but because they lack talent. This movie had no budget and was completely unofficial, and yet it is superior to just about every other video game movie out there. And so, this is General Watts, signing off. Are you supposed to say an action movie? Did you just say far out? A far out concept? Shut up. Holy shit, are you from the 60s or something? Do Marina. Your shirt is far out, man. Oh, wow. Jeez, that's a punisher. Dude. Far <laughs> out.